welcome to episode uh, 38 of the We On Sports Broadband Edition with me, Digvijay Singh Deal. My guest today joins me from England. Dane Vilas is the captain of Lancashire. He's a former South African international as well. How have you been, Dane? Uh, how has this uh, lockdown been treating you? Yeah, Diggy, thanks, uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's always great to talk to you and, uh, you know, hopefully the people in India are well. Um, yeah, look, it's been strange. It's been very difficult uh, with how things are going, obviously, around the world. Um, people are unsure what's what's happening, but just from looking from the outside, it looks like things are slowly improving. So that's that's a good thing. So I've been okay, considering things. Okay, and I think you know the thing with the virus is uh, most of us are in in our homes and we sort of lock down and we think that it's not going to touch us. But there are people who get very closely affected. Uh, in your case, uh, just right at the beginning of this entire lockdown period, uh, a key member of the Lancashire team passed away after contracting this virus. That would have made it particularly hard, wasn't it, at the end of March? Yeah, look, it was very sad. I mean, a, a key member, like you say, our chairman, uh, David Hoskins, was a huge part of Lancashire. Um, a lovely man, a great guy who I got on really well with. And he was so passionate about the game and so passionate about uh, us at Lancs and at Old Trafford. So for him to, uh, to pass away was very sad. And, uh, you know, I mean, it'll be... I'm sure like, like many people around the world, there'll be some uh, terrible stories and things. And, um, but that's why it's important to, uh, to stay safe in these times and, and make sure that we do the right things. But England sort of had it, uh, it's, it's been a bit odd, like in India where we are, the lockdown meant you couldn't even get out of the house. But I've been speaking to friends who are in England, who are sports persons based out of England. And at least in certain cases, you had the ability to go out for a run, go out for a walk, you know, maintaining social distances. But for you, you've got a young family as well. So how did that sort of pan out, you know? Yeah, it has been a bit, has been a bit strange. It, it felt a little bit like, um, yeah, it felt a little bit tough as well. Um, we were only allowed out for one or two hours a day at the initial stage. Um, where you could only get out, do exercise. You couldn't sit in the park. You couldn't sit on the beach or, you know, do anything like that. But you had to uh, exercise. So for me to get the kids out was, was great. You know, we could go, we quite um, fortunate we stay um, in and around Wimbledon. So we've got the Wimbledon Common, huge park here, which is amazing. So we could go out, go for a bike ride and just explore a bit of nature again, which you don't really get in the big city. So that was, that was nice. Um, uh, but yeah, it has been strange, you know, just keeping distance from people that's sort of the two meters apart, social distancing um, has been, uh, has been pretty good and I think people are adhering to that rule but like I said it looks like it feels like we're in a lockdown but because the weather is, has been so good yeah it's been surprising it's been incredible that people have been out and about and been able to get out but like you say but just spread out a bit more so it's a bit strange. You know on a lighter note you're probably one of the few guys who can actually go out and say I actually had a good time in Wimbledon <laughs> considering the tennis tournament is not happening this year. No, exactly. I mean, that's a huge loss. I mean, it's a great place to be. Um, if you ever get a chance to come through uh, to Wimbledon in, um, in June, when, when the tennis is on, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's buzzing. But um, yeah, look, for, for me personally, it's, it's, it's been good because I don't really get to spend this much time with the family. Normally, we're traveling or we're playing uh, and we're quite busy during the season, especially the county season is extremely busy. So to actually spend a, a good sort of two months now with the family, I mean, I've got a young family, I've got a little boy who's five who's cricket and football mad he just wants to play and a little uh, girl she's two and so just to spend time with them and, and see them and watch them grow up has been great um so yeah so yeah it's been a it's been a good and, and a bad sort of uh, lockdown obviously missing cricket hugely and, and missing sports um and also just the social interaction with people has been has been has been a tough one but you know we there are some some good uh, points out of it as well Okay, because, you know, sport, uh, Dane, has this reputation of being a great healer. I mean, you just go back to your country where you come from, South Africa. We've all seen what the 1995 Rugby World Cup did. Uh, but I've been talking to so many sportspersons around the world right now. And everyone seems to be, one, frustrated at, you know, at being locked indoors. And secondly, not being able to go and do what they do, which is play and also entertain their fans because at the moment sport was such an integral part of our lives but suddenly it's been what two months without any sport no it's it's massive you just see obviously how huge sport is and just with the people watching people come to the stadiums also the tv uh, it is huge it's important and people love it people you know some people dedicate their whole week leading up to a sporting event on the weekend or friday night or something like that it's just it's massive so 
it gives people a sort of a, um, uh, a way to, re to relax, to, to watch, to enjoy, to sort of get their heart racing again. So it, it's hugely important for the mental well-being of, of people around the world, the spectators, and also for the players. You know, everybody wants to get out and play. It's something that we love and we very fortunate that we can do. Um, but like, yeah, exactly. You know, we, we, we uh, want to get out and about. We feel a bit like, um, you know, cage lions a bit where you can just, you, you see that there's opportunity. And especially like I mentioned here in, in England, the weather has been fantastic. I mean, April and May couldn't ask for any better conditions. You know, it's sunny, it's 20 odd degrees all the time, which you don't really get. And it's perfect cricket weather. So to not have that, not being able to play has been really tough and really frustrating. But again, like I say, you know, there's, there's bigger things that's going on in the world at the moment. But I'm sure you see like things are moving now at the moment. I know obviously football is, is trying to get on track and trying to play a bit more. I'm sure all the other sports will follow and, and people will be desperate and crying out for them, which will be, which will be great. And you know, hopefully we can get back and we can entertain the people, like you say, and because that is, that is a, it's a, it's a great and a fun part of our job that we, that we can do that and inspire some people. And, and the, perhaps it's starting, isn't it? Because I was reading about the ECB actually uh, resuming training, asking uh, counties that you can actually, they've set, set down this SOP, so how training can resume again. So have you had the chance to go out and actually uh, start training again? Or has it been all at home, some shadow practice? No, it's been all at home, really. Um, we, as county players, the domestic side, we haven't been allowed to go and train. It's only the internationals that are... Um, allowed to go and sort of train um, uh, initially and um, just to see how they go because obviously um, they're trying to get up for some test matches. I think we've got uh, West Indies that are coming and maybe Pakistan in the, in the future. So they're just trying to build up for that um, and get that over the line first and then sort of have a basis or a guideline to where when it's safe for the uh, domestic players to come back. Um, it is tough. Obviously, you need all the, um, with all the restrictions that are going on, you need everything in place. So to start off with a small group, I think is, is great and how they've, how they've handled it has been very good. So, like I said, it's just mainly the, the bowlers and the, the, well, the internationals and the bowlers will start going and get out, which I know they're all desperate to go out and, and get some action. Yes, I can, I can hear that passion in your voice eating to get back on, on the cricket ground. But yes. a larger question is this, you know, both England and India are very cricket crazy countries, but is social distancing day possible on a cricket field? You know, Cricket is about, you're a bowler, you're running into bowl, working out really hard, you finally get the batsman out and you can't go and celebrate. You're a batsman, you hit a 50 or a 100 and you can't go and, you know, celebrate with the guy at the other end. That's, that's sort of, that's the question, isn't it? Will cricket be the same if, if it has to follow these social distancing guidelines? Uh, look, I think it's tough. Um, obviously, the, the camaraderie in, in sports and, and cricket especially is huge, you know. When you get a wicket, you celebrate, you come in, you come into the huddle, you give everyone a half five, you, you know, do that. You have that social interaction, which is brilliant. And because you need it, you need your support from your teammates. So to lose that is going to be difficult. But I think, you know, maybe, maybe we've, we've seen signs of it already, you know, with the way that Imran Tahir, when he celebrates, he gets a wicket, he runs away from everyone. So he's sort of been social distancing. Uh, the Indian players I know, you used to touch gloves, now they just touch bats. So they, uh, they one step ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, all jokes aside, it's it's it is going to be difficult. It is, and and it's going to and it's going to change the way we do things. Um, but you know what? If if it's if it's a few small things that we have to tweak here and there just to get back playing, and and get um, and get the game moving forward again, I think you know, as all, as players, and I think even as fans, that uh, we'll take that. You know. But uh, you know, obviously, you know, every sport has to adapt. I was speaking to Lord Sebastian Coe last week, and he was saying, oh, "Athletics is going to adapt." And how athletics may not look the same, at least till the end of this year. But talking about the life of a professional cricketer, how does that change? Because obviously you 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 contracted with Lancashire and you 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 with them and 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 but there is obviously the possibility, Dane, that you know if the season doesn't go on and the more the matches don't happen, it's going to be a trickle down effect and it's ultimately bound to affect the players. Yeah, it, it will do. And I think it has already, you know. Um, I know, especially in the county stuff, that um, a lot of us, or pretty much all of us, have all taken salary cuts. Um, you know, we're quite, quite fortunate that we still got our jobs and that some people are, are going to lose uh, their jobs out of this. But we have taken a, a, a pay cut um, just to help cricket and to help the club mainly to, to move forward. And you're right, it will be a trickle-down effect. But you know what? Also, at the end of the day, you can't, you can't worry about 
that stuff, you've just got to try a plan and make the best out of it. Um, and it will, it, the whole world will change, the whole landscape of the world and how we do things will change and we have to adapt, you know, even, you know, adapting to these lockdowns, you know, we've, we've done different things socially, you know, these Zoom meetings, I've, I've done hundreds of these now, not just uh, interviews, but just speaking to family members, quizzes, all of that stuff. And, you know, how you do things is also, it's going to change. So, yeah, we've got to adapt like we do anyway. And I think that's, you know, there'll be some good stuff that comes out of this. You know, everything, every opportunity, every sort of door that closes, there's a new opportunity for, for someone or something to happen. And I'm, and I'm sure we'll, we'll survive and we'll get, and we'll get on, the, on the right space, you know. Fair enough. Uh, but for sporting bodies, in fact, this is perhaps going to be a much more difficult one because I, I know for a fact that the ECB had a lot riding on the 100. You, in fact, had been picked for that as yeah. well. But the 100 has been pushed back by, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a huge loss of revenue. And ultimately, as you said, it's, it's everyone across the cricketing ecosystem which will take the hit because of that tournament getting pushed back. Yeah, massive. It, it is big. You know, I just, um, and I've said before that um, actually, you know, quite sad for the for the guys who worked tirelessly on the hundred. I mean they it was a tournament that they've been planning for years now, I think at least three or four years, um, to get to this point, you know, after the success of the uh, the Cricket World Cup here, the hype around cricket uh, last year that we had it was was massive here in, in the UK. And just leading up it was going to be a fantastic season. You know, so all that work has sort of just gone down the drain now. Uh, and you've had to reshift the focus and, and you know, plan maybe a bit more for next next year. Um, and again, see how we get to that. I know they've got some clever guys up there who are doing, crunching all the numbers and doing everything and making sure that we can get it right. So uh, it has been difficult. Um, like, but, you know, the trickle-down effect, we can only, it, it's only going to, we can only see in a couple of years what's going to happen. So um, it's hard to really judge now and really say what, what's going to happen. But uh, it, it, will, it will affect us, but we're just going to make the most of it. Okay, that's an, that's an interesting point. But there's also another another type of professional cricketer we need to think about because you still have a central contract with Lancashire. A lot of Indian players here are contracted either to the Indian Cricket Board, the BCCI, or their respective state bodies. So at least there is some guaranteed yeah. income. But there are many who, who go around the world playing professional leagues. They're, they're the T20 travelers, as they say. Uh, you, in fact, have, have played uh, also uh, the T20 leagues. You, you were in Pakistan as well and, you know, that, that PSL didn't end too well. The IPL, which is the big one in India here, is currently suspended because we don't know, uh, you know when everyone can get in and we can have that tournament. That's, that's also, again, ultimately going to affect the, the professional uh, cricketer across the world. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna have a huge impact. You know, just so that model of the, uh, the T20 traveller is, is a new one and, and it's only been sort of maybe probably 10, five, five to 10 years of someone doing that. So it, it has, it has going to affect people in a huge way. If you can't have tournaments, you know, uh, a massive loss of income for, for a lot of players who have got to that stage, have worked hard to get to, to where they are. So again, it's, it's going to be massive, you know, for, for everyone, not just your, and I think the, the hardest thing is it affects everyone. It affects the, your, the, the biggest dogs around the world to the, the, the smallest players. Um, so yeah, it it will be it will be tough, um, and I you know just even just travel, just travel around different parts of the world, and we don't know when it's going to end. For me, that that's the hardest part is not knowing, you know, when it's going to end. I think as sports people, and I think and most people, you know, if you if we have a goal in mind, and you, and we set a target, you know, we can sort of work our way to that. And if you don't have that, you don't have that sort of that's unknowing, um, is is very difficult, you know, to deal with. But then, is it also going to play on the minds of, of players like you that suppose you have this gig coming up and it is safe to play, but at the moment we don't have a vaccine. Will it also weigh on the minds of cricketers that I'm actually going to step onto a flight, I'm going to another country to play a tournament. I don't know what the situation is over there. I've got friends, family, parents staying with me perhaps, you know. All those factors when you weigh in, it, that, that, that's a lot of pressure on just one individual because yes, you have to ensure that there is money coming in and there are various other streams to compensate for pay cuts and all of that. Uh, but the other is, how do you take the risk on health? Exactly. I mean, that, that is going to be extremely difficult. You know? Um, you know, it all depends what sort of situation you are in your life. If, you, uh, you know, if you're just a, a young a player who doesn't have any family or anything that, 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 and they 
got a small place by themselves or even a place that just that they can isolate if they want to, or you've got guys with a young family uh, or some people, a youngster who stayed at home with uh, maybe, you know, a, a grandfather, grandmother or older sort of uh, parents. You know, there's all these different things that you need to take into consideration. Um, but again, like I say, you know, we're quite fortunate in the, in the sport or the um, industry that we are that we do have people who look after our best interests, um, especially, you know, when it comes to uh, security, when it comes to medical, um, all of that, they, they really, really take it into account. You know, we've got, um, we've got some great people um, who, who do that and they'll give us the, the, the best advice. But again, you know, it's, it's up to the individual. If anybody is uncertain or doesn't feel like they can handle that, they can deal with those pressures of, you know, maybe infecting someone else or infecting a loved one, then it's up to them, you know. And, and I think as, as, um, as cricketers or as, as maybe people in leadership roles, you have to accept that and you have to, you know, have to be understanding to each and every uh, one's uh, circumstances. Yes, fair enough. I mean, you know, uh, the Watford captain in the football team, uh, Troy Deeney, in fact, refused to go out and train because he has a young kid at home. And I think we should not judge professional sports persons for putting their families ahead of, uh, say, uh, health risk. But uh, the ICC Cricket Committee yesterday, uh, yesterday came up with these recommendations for the resumption of cricket. The most important and significant one was, uh, for me was this uh, no putting saliva on the ball. Now the bowlers aren't going to be too happy, you know. It, anyway, it, it's a tough game for them, and now they can't shine the ball. No, no, exactly. Um, you, get, you know, come up with different ways and means. Maybe use uh, some sweat. Um, so, which means that the fielders are probably going to, have to run around a little bit more to get uh, sweaty. Um, but yeah, it's it's again, it's going to be interesting. I know. I think there was some trial of uh, a ball manufacturer was looking at a different wax you could put on a ball. Um, but maybe you know what? That might that might help might make the um, you know the bowlers a little more skillful you know to to help them to deal with these sort of things and you know if you're the if you're the best and you can come out with something like that it, it'll be better so it'll be, be it'll be more beneficial for you as a player again it will be tough again look it's all in a sort of a trial phase at the moment i mean we haven't even got to play no one knows we're going to actually play any cricket so it's all talking at the moment but again like i said previously you know the people have at the top, they, they know what they're doing. Um, they'll, make the, they'll make the best sort of recommendations for us. And I, and I, and I trust in them that, they, that they'll do it in the best interest for, for us as players and for the people who've invested into the game and, and, and the fans, especially. You know? Yeah, but you know, I, I'll tell you what I think about it. Uh, my point is that anyway, resuming sport at the moment is a risk. There is still no vaccine. So you, you can eliminate the crowd from, from the stadiums. Uh, you can you can have strict social distancing norms in it as well, but should you change the integrity of the sport? Ultimately, uh, you know the the problem with using wax is it's like it's like ball tampering. You know you're putting an artificial substance in the case of saliva or sweat. It's still fluids from your body. Should we to combat this virus change the integrity of the sport or look at the flip side, which is test everyone, everyone who's playing that match, the, the 22 players and the umpires and, and the support staff, everyone's tested, they're cleared to go, go and play cricket the normal way, especially as we have it in England as well, play tough, but enjoy the game. Yeah, I think so, it's important, but I think also you need to be flexible in these sort of times, in these trying times. Unfortunately, with this virus, there's no blueprint, there's no handbook to tell us what to do. You know, this is completely new and no one's ever dealt with it um, before. So, yes, I agree with you, you need, you need to um, keep the, the norms of of cricket and sports especially um but also there has to be some adaptability if you want to move forward otherwise we just have to sweep it under the table and just say right you know to write off a whole year um but just from my understanding uh, of of the things that everybody reacts differently to the to the virus you know some people are completely you know that doesn't bother them at all they they might be a carrier they might not be affected in any way and some people react completely different so it's hard to really go on a on a um, on a whole group basis, you have to treat any every case individually. So um, yeah, it will be tough, but um, we need to sort of make the best out of it to 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 maximise where we can for for the for the season and and to get sport back on it. 
you know, you actually said a couple of questions back that I trust the administrators, but imagine what's going through the minds of those in the ICC. There's a huge ICC tournament coming up at the end of yes. the year, which is the ICC T20 World Cup. The women's one actually went off without a hitch, even though you had one positive case in the final. But that's, that's the big one, isn't it? It's the big decision. What do you do? Because Australia slowly sort of opening up, spoken to a few sportspersons in Australia. You know, you can, you're allowed to now go back, go out and train. But the question is sanitizing all those people who are coming in from outdoors. You know, if people coming in from India, people perhaps coming in from Pakistan, Sri Lanka, West Indies, all over the world, everyone flying into one place. I think that's the major worry. Do you think uh, it will go ahead at the moment? Look, I, I, I like to be uh, optimistic and pretty positive. So I think it will go ahead. You know, um, I think, like I said, just the way that things are, are going at the moment, we're only in where we are. You know, we, we're about six months away from that tournament starting. So I think with how things and the trend is slowly sort of the, the peak is dipping, um, that I, I hope it will go ahead because I think it needs to. It's, it's a great tournament and for the players to be part of and for everyone to watch is, is huge. And it is. It's, it's, a, it's one of the flagship tournaments um, for cricket. So it, I think it needs to happen um, as, as if, if it can safely. So that would, that would be first prize. But like you say, I mean, getting people in from different parts of the world, um, bringing in you know, different strains or different, uh, yeah, the huge amount of uh, variables that, that can happen. So like you say, the, the ICC, it's a big tournament. It's a, it's a, it's a, big, um, it's a big money spinner for them, which, is, which will help the game, which, we, which will need a bit of an uh, injection. So they'll have, they'll have all, everything in place. Um, but like I said before, that they won't put any players or anyone at risk um, if, if, they, if they feel that it is a risk and they will, they will do the best for the, for the teams. Yes, like you said, it's a long way off and already we are seeing sporting leagues starting to get underway. I think, I think, you know, sport has this ability, even though we've sort of missed sport over the last two months, sport has this ability to sort of get the world back together, you know, like a beacon of hope. They wanted to do it with the Olympics. Sadly, the Olympics had to be postponed. But ultimately, you know, we're talking of the French Open being played uh, in at the end of September, stretching into October, the Augusta Masters happening in November. So I, I, I think what we are also seeing is sports sort of fighting back, isn't it? And, and ultimately, when you see uh, sportspersons who are perhaps one of the fittest individuals out there uh, giving their all on a sporting pitch, it, it will encourage people as well and, and sort of banish that anxiety from their minds as to getting back to normal as well. Don't you think that? Oh, definitely. The sport definitely has the power to inspire, inspire and unite people. So... And that's what, it's, that's what it's designed for. People love it. People um, gravitate towards it. Uh, and it brings people closer together from all walks of life and um, everything. You know? So it, it's, it's, it's vitally important. Um, and I know that um, you know, sport will, will, will be a, a huge, um, will, will be huge for, for to end this, this virus and bring people together and sort of create awareness around it. You look at all the sport people that are doing great things as well. So you're completely right when you say that, that uh, it is important and it will bring people together. So I hope it does. Um, and like you say, there are um, countries and teams that are, that are sort of getting uh, a little bit of ahead of where we are at the moment, especially here in, in England. Um, you know, like you said, Bundesliga is playing already. Um, I think Sri Lanka also talking about having um, a team coming out there uh, or teams coming to to play against them because they've had quite a few, they don't, have, they don't have as many cases. So, you know, it's things that the ball is slowly starting to roll. So hopefully it, like it, by the time we get to December, everything is semi back to normal and we can uh, have a great tournament. Yes, as they always say in, in sport, you know, the show must go on. But uh, Dale, thank you so much for your time. It's been a really, uh, a really, you know, lovely talking to you because the sharing of perspective, you spoke about how uh, lots of new things happening in sport. I mean, you know, Imagine talking to you sitting out there using a, a social media or some kind of a social media app to connect. That's also something that, uh, that this virus has taught us that even though they may be social distancing, the boundaries have been sort of blurred because of the advances in technology. And, and thank you so much for your time. And uh, hopefully you can get back to playing sport uh, as soon as you can. Hopefully we can sort of get out of our lockdown as soon as we can. That's hope. Exactly. That's hope. And that's all we have is hope, you know, so that's great. So thank you for having me on. Um, just want to wish everybody, hopefully they stay safe um, over there in India. You know, 
Um, as Lancashire, we were recently over there before pre, uh, for a pre-season, which was fantastic, and we love coming out there. It's a great country, so very good, and uh, thanks for having me on, and hopefully we, uh, we get back playing on both sides of, of um, in, both, in both countries and all around the world, actually. Thank you. Thank you.